So we're going to do a little bit of review, and then we're going to um, step into just take our dip our little toe uh, in um, lesson three. Uh, the first question I have for you is, what was the first? Um, The first anchor that we talked about this year. Oh, that's close. Your worldview is that, 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 yeah, that's like an act of words, I think. The Christian worldview is the way God views the world. The Christian worldview is the way God views the world. And then what was the second, the anchor for the second? Everyone has a worldview. Uh, everyone has a worldview. Uh, and so this week we're going to talk about uh, the anchor is going to be God is who he says he is. Uh, who gets to define you? God does, and you do, right? Other people don't get to define you. Uh, God is who he says he is. I know a little something of this from my growing up years. Um at least the last two places my father was stationed, uh, people knew we were coming before we got there. Uh, when we came here, uh, he was the new uh, chief of staff of SAC, and there was a big uh, article on the front page of the, uh, the not the World Herald, the Bellevue Leader, and it was my mother and my sisters and me on the front of our house, the steps of our house, was 21 on General's Row, and then uh, when he became the deputy chairman of the NATO military in, in Brussels, uh, again, there was, you know, press about, about that. So people knew who I was before I knew them. And they had already defined me. I cannot tell you how many times in the year book that I had something like this. I really needed you. They took what they thought they knew about a general's daughter and they pegged me as that. They tried to define me as that. And I wasn't. Um, so they didn't get to define me. I, I get to, or uh, God gets to, but, but not other people. And people like to say a lot of things about God and who God is and what he's like. But the only true... Um, Exclamation of who God is is who He says He is. Uh, and we spent a lot of time last year um, proving the the authority of the Bible and the reliability of the Bible. And in the Bible, God says who He is. He gets to define Himself. A.W. Tozer was a popular 20th century uh, pastor. Uh, he's one of uh, Mr. Schrag's favorite authors. And he asked this question, what comes into your mind when you think about God? So do that right now. Just your, what's the first thing you think of when you think about God? It's a really important question. And then A.W. Tozer writes this, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Because God is the God of the universe, and He is our Creator, um, and 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 what we do with God, and how we think about God, goes a long way, regardless of what the answer is. Goes a long way to defining who we are. Right? Someone's an atheist, and thinks there is no God. That was a very different imprint on their life. Completely different. And so it's impossible for finite human beings to understand an infinite God. Even the concept of infinity, if you think about it too long, will make your brain uh, hurt. Uh, and so it is impossible for us to compre comprehend the infinite nature of God's character and of his person. Um, and, and that has caused uh, someone to say that the way a man perceives God is the way he will live his life. That's what I was just talking about. Uh, as a man or a woman perceives God, is the 
the way that person will live their life. If there's no God, I die, I'm dead, it's dead. So I just, whatever. Well, I don't know what I can get for me. But if you believe there's a God that created you, to whom you are accountable, things very different. So given that uh, much, uh, much of the world lives, uh, excuse me, uh, given that uh, much of our world, given the way that much of our world lives, there's ample evidence uh, to suggest that most people, or at least a lot of people, have a very limited understanding of God. They don't know who he is. They know who they think he is, but they don't actually know who he is. Um, and, and if we ever hope to engage with a culture that is um, largely godless, I don't mean that as a, a negative thing for them, they just don't know God. If we ever hope to engage with people whose worldview is so different than ours and whose understanding of God is so different than ours. Um, then we need to become familiar with God. We need to know who He is so that we can tell others. Uh, and, and so then, who does He say He is? And that's what we're going to talk about as we go through this. And a thorough knowledge of, of, of God and of His character and what He has done, of who He is, is going to be the other part of our lives. So here are the goals for this lesson. Students will understand some misconceptions that people have about God. Students will understand that uh, who God is who he says he is. Uh, unbelievers, um, because this is written to the people that are searching as well, will consider a God with whom they are not familiar. Students will understand key characteristics about God. Students will understand how a true knowledge of God should affect the way they live their lives. And students will be better able to recognize counterfeit gods by knowing who God is. So I have a few uh, sort of um, intro questions for you. Um, what is the difference between a uh, an agnostic and an atheist? Yeah. An agnostic is a person who is searching. This is So the second part of that is is absolutely correct. The atheist says there is no God. He knows there is no God. At least he's pretty sure. An agnostic isn't necessarily certain. An agnostic can be settled in his agnosticism. Um, but what what does a, an agnostic believe? They don't know if there's a God. Now, that, that doesn't mean they're searching. They say, I don't know, and I don't care. Right? That, that's one kind of an agnostic that says, I, I don't know. There maybe there is. Maybe there is. I, I can't imagine them not wanting to know for sure. Uh, but there are a lot of people that are very content. To live that way. Then the other kind of agnostic, and I think I call that the philosophical kind of agnosticism, is that the reason we can't know if there's a God or not is that if there is a God, he's unknowable. Like literally, we can't know that there's a God or not because uh, if he exists, he's unknowable. Uh, so, um, uh, there, there may be a God, but there's no way to truly know. So I want to lead us into uh, a conversation, uh, and I need to, uh, pick on somebody. Come help me. So this is a kind of an, um, illustration of, uh, and, and, you know, Something in some sort of conversation that maybe you can have with someone at some time. Um, but this is, we're going to pretend this is a circle. Okay? And, and I'm going to give you, what am I going to give you? I'm going to give you, where'd I put it? Okay, well, it really doesn't matter. Here, I'm going to give you this one right here. Okay? Um, and we're going to pretend that this uh, quote unquote circle represents all of the knowledge that is and ever has been and ever will be. So this represents 
all of the knowledge that ever has been, that is, and that ever will be. And you're going to somehow in this represent how much of that knowledge that you know or you possess. Oh, yeah. I compared to that, how much do you know? There you go. Okay. Pretty good, I think. No. Oh, really? No, I'm just <laughs> I'd like you to meet God's assistant. <laughs> so then, if we had a conversation, uh, Quentin, about this, let's just you're, you're, you're role playing an atheist. So. Um, so that's everything that you know. Is it possible that there may be some knowledge outside of your ability to know um, that proves God or that uh, that has evidence for God? If this is all the knowledge there is, and this is all that we have. Could it be possible that there's something outside of your field of experience and understanding that would show God? Uh, maybe. 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 Now we've turned it into an agnostic, right? Maybe. Maybe there's a God. Maybe there are. That's, that's progress. Honestly, that's progress. So thank you very much for, for humoring me with that. Yes. Oh, turn off, off the light. Turn off the light. Okay. Sure. I can do that. Is that better? Okay. Excellent. Um, so, so this is how it says here. Might there be some truth that is beyond your own experience? Uh, and and this, this can help someone see that perhaps there are truths that he or she doesn't know or can't understand yet. And what might those be? And you're, you're just planting a seed, right, of doubt in, in atheism um, and, and to cause that person to question and maybe say, hmm, maybe I need to, to look more. And it may just open up a dialogue. Um, and as I've told you before, if you, you know, if you do open up these dialogues with people who are unbelievers, whether they're, you know, believers in another religion or whether they're agnostic or whether they're atheists, um, it's important that they remain cordial. It's important that they remain conversations. As soon as it becomes an argument, uh, and uh, nobody has ever argued it, you need to be um, always be ready to give an answer to, to those who ask for the, why the, the hope that lies within you, but do it with gentleness. Uh, we have to have these conversations gently, and we have to have. Um, next question. Can we understand a person's worldview through their actions? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and remember that triangle. So what or what were those actions? What were those statements based on? What? His worldview, but but in between there, what's in between the actions and the worldview? His values. You can tell what he values, right, in those statements. And so we can uh, see uh, their worldview through their value because it values, um, because the worldview is, the values are um, predicated on the worldview and the action flows out. Um, Even a child is known by his actions, by what his conduct is going to be. A lot can be discerned from it. Um, can someone change their worldview? Yeah, absolutely. As long as we're on this side of the song, uh, uh, yeah, we can we can change that. And God is in the business of doing that. God is in the business of um, changing lives. Years ago, I was listening to a, a radio show called Focus on the Family, uh, Dr. Jim Dobson. Uh, and he had a, a speaker that day his radio show was playing a speaker. I don't remember her name, uh, but I've never forgotten her story. And um, 
she uh, she was married, and she said my marriage was dead. Uh, and she said it was it was I'm not saying it was on life support. It was, and and she described that, and she said, I I just didn't care. I didn't care if he came. I didn't care if he left. I don't care. Didn't care if he was there. I didn't care what he was doing. I did not care. And he felt the same way. Um, and then um, she came to Christ, but her marriage was still dead. And then he came to Christ, but their marriage was still dead. And then one day, um, something happened to a family member that was very serious, and they decided to pray together. And by the way, I, I believe praying. Um, and she said that it was in that prayer that God, she used an old tiny word, um, quicken our, our prayer. When we used to say the, not the Lord's Prayer, um, the Apostles' Creed, we used to say, uh, you will come back, back to uh, get the, the quick and the dead. It's the living and the dead, right? The quick and the dead. And I was always like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to be taken. Uh, so, uh, so he got quick in our dead marriage, um, and uh, and then she said this: We have a God who specializes in resurrecting that which was dead, and we do. We have a God that specializes in resurrecting that which was dead, even do in the lives of people who are spiritual. So yeah, world views can change. Uh, any questions on any of that? Okay, I want to remind you that on Wednesday, uh, you want to wear a college shirt of some sort. Um, I want it to be an actual college. I don't want it just to say college. Um, and you'll get a donut for that. And uh, then on Thursday night, hang on, hang on. On Thursday night, we had two guys coming to speak about uh, how do you find a college, how do you pay for college, how do you apply for college. They are very experts in their field. Uh, if you have questions, uh, bring your parents. Uh, there will be food, probably too much because it's what I do best. And um, there will be prizes for supper. Okay, so please come. There's no score. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock to eight thirty.